Hey everyone, today I'm filming a Q&A. Um, I put up two posts on my YouTube community page asking you to ask me questions about being a stay-at-home wife and all things centered around that. I got some good questions so I thought I would sit down and do a quick Q&A with you guys. So if you want to if you like these type of videos i personally love q a's so if you guys want to participate in my next q a then either keep an eye out for my community post or subscribe to the channel so that you're like more likely to see them because i will probably always do them from my youtube community page maybe in the future from my instagram but most likely from the community page the theme for it was like asking me questions for about being a stay-at-home wife and anything having to do kind of with that so the first question is was your family supportive slash how do you tell others about your lifestyle have you worked in the past do you plan to work in the future so was your was my family supportive i think so i mean i fell into being a stay-at-home wife kind of like non-intentionally I to answer the other question I was working as a massage therapist and it was actually a really really good job my hands got covered in eczema and it would not go away so I kind of was forced to quit because my hands were just quite literally falling off <laughs> so my family was supportive in that aspect because everyone just wanted me to stop working there because my hands were so bad like my godparents and my mom were just like, you need to quit this job because it's clearly like not working for you. I was just really hesitant because I made a lot of money, so I didn't, I kind of didn't want to. In that aspect, everyone was was supportive that I just like quit working, and then the plan was for me to work, um, hopefully again in the future, like have my hands heal, which didn't happen. Um, I actually did try to go back to work about a month or so ago, and after two days my hands completely broke out in eczema again so that's a no-go for me do you think they were supportive because when I told them I was gonna go back to work everyone was like kind of shocked and they're like you're gonna go back to work I, I think they were more supportive of the like I would say lifestyle more than I thought so and how do you tell others about it I mean there is a little bit of weirdness I think it just mainly comes for me when people like ask if I'm with my husband and like they ask us like what do you do for work I'm like oh I don't you know work I stay home I feel like I get weird about it I don't know if other people get weird about it but one thing I will say that I wouldn't say that like my family is not supportive in this way or like friends and family but when I had work and there's like an event happening or someone needs help with something and I said oh I can't do that because I have to go to work everyone was really understanding but when I don't have like a job and someone asks me to do something or wants to hang out or something like that and it's like I don't work so like I feel like it's almost like people expect me to not have an excuse or something to not be able to go to whatever it is but because I like don't have work but the thing is is like being home and running the house and everything is work like I do have to be home for certain things just because it's like my responsibility and I feel like people are a little less understanding of that they're like oh just leave it for another day or for whatever but oh my gosh I think there's securities coming over here so if I like stay I have responsibilities at home so like I feel like people are a little less understanding of like if I can't go somewhere or do something like in the middle of the day just because I don't have a job doesn't mean I can like go <laughs> if that makes sense so I don't think that it's like unsupportive I just like think people don't understand or I don't know they're just not as understanding as if I said oh I can't do that because I have to go to work like people are like oh okay you have to go to work like no problem so that's the only thing that's like it's not even an issue but I'm going to ask, what about sharing some recipes for us? How about a what I eat in a day kind of video? I just made a what I eat in a week video where I give like how to eat at home tips, 
and I showed what we ate for dinner for a whole week. So I will link that down in the description. The next question is help with being submissive in serving our husband as a Christian wife. Okay, that's a really good question. I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions around this um, because like as a woman, I'm going to talk to other women about being a wife. I'm not going to like talk to men about being a husband because I don't know how to be a husband because I'm not a, a man. I'm a woman. So I feel like women are more, I don't know, maybe like likely to, talk, I don't know. Guys talk about this too. I don't want to say that, but like women, I think are more like talking about it, maybe like on the internet or something. In the Bible, it calls for for wives to be submissive to their husbands. And it also calls for husbands to be submissive to their wives. So it's not like just a one way street of submission. And I feel like it has a really bad, I don't know, like a really bad, like a uh, stereotype or something around it. Like I see submission as if like, let's say Gunnar and I have a goal to in mind together. And then I want to do something that goes against that goal. And if Gunnar says no, then being a submissive wife is like on like listening to that and respecting his decision that it's a no, even though I want to do it. And I feel like people take that the, the, like such in a, such a wrong way. Um, and I know maybe I would have in the future, but if you have a like a godly husband, like a Christian husband that is like following God, that is close to God, it's easy to be like submissive to them because they're like you honor them and respect them it's like I honor I like respect my husband a lot so if he makes a decision and like we won't make a decision unless we both agree on it <laughs> so if we both don't agree on it we won't do it and so that that's us both being submissive to each other because like if he wants to do something and I don't we won't do it and that you know people would be like oh he listens to you like that that's like not frowned upon for some reason but if I want to do something and he doesn't agree with it we still don't do it <laughs> and then that's me being a submissive wife and that can be m missed like taken the wrong way I guess so for me like the question was help with being a submissive wife I find it easy to be not always like sometimes I, you know, I don't know, <laughs> we're just like, you know, like strong minded, strong, uh, I get like wrapped up in my own little world and, you know, Gunner's really good about like keeping us on track on like what our main goals are. And so at the end of the day, it's like, those are my goals too, because we came up with them together. So it's not like it's hard to be, um, but I think that it being a submissive wife has a lot to do like talking with your husband like hey I want to be like not you know and you can take the word submissive out of there if you don't like it you know I don't want to be so strong-minded strong-willed but I feel like you're not hearing me because I feel like with your husband's doing a good job of like taking in your feelings into consideration like helping you with things and you know, doing what he's supposed to be doing, it's not hard to like be submissive. So if you go to him and say like, Hey, I want to be more submissive to you. Like I want to stop being so strong willed. Uh, but I'm having a hard time doing it because I feel like, you know, X, Y, and Z, or I need help with X, Y, and Z. So I would say, talk with your, your spouse about that. But it's not, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. You have to remember you're both on the same team. Um, and I think that question like can go so deep into like making sure you marry a really good compatible person to you and like working out or just being aware of your differences and kind of like knowing where you're going to butt heads. Like I know if Gunnar and I are going to disagree on something <laughs> like, so if we're going to, we're going to have to make a decision on something that we know where I'm, we're going to disagree. Like I'll be a lot more open-minded. Next question. What is your laundry schedule? How do you handle doing laundry? I've tried the one load a day idea, but then I feel like things like bath mats, delicate clothes always get overlooked. So 
my rule of thumb is I do the one laundry a day. So for me, that works for me right now because that also includes like bath mats because it's just Gunner and I, like my husband and I. So if I'm doing a load of laundry a day, like usually a week, it's like two loads of regular clothes. One load would be like towels. The next load would be, I would do like bath mats or the floor mats and then like kitchen towels as another load. And then, you know, I don't always do one load a day. If there's like nothing to wash, then I'm not going to wash it. Uh, this might change when I, like if I have children, you know, I think I'm, I'm <laughs> for sure will have to do one load of laundry a day and then somehow be able to incorporate that. But if you tend to forget the bath mats often, I would just like write it down or keep a little schedule on your, in your laundry room or like on the doors of your, where the laundry washer and dryer are of like, okay, you know, Monday, Tuesday, I wash the clothes, Wednesday, I wash the bath mats, etc., etc. But I think just scheduling, scheduling it in. But if I get like behind on laundry for some reason, I don't do one load a day. Um, I get backed up. Yeah, I won't wash the bath mats for a while. <laughs> but you just have to like be intentional. What are your some of your short and long term goals as a homemaker? Um, short term, well, it's almost the holidays, so maybe learn how to make some fun holiday like baked recipes. I feel like last year I didn't really have time to do that. I was working last year for the holidays, so this year would be really fun to be able to do that. I'm not like a really big decorator of the seasons, so I, I like to have a really simple tree, like just tree and lights, that's it. Long-term goals as a homemaker. I, would lo I have long-term goals. I want to learn how to make sourdough bread and how to make it quickly and efficiently so that I'm able to make it all the time because after you practice something I feel like for a while you get really good and efficient at it and I would love to be able to do that quickly and on a routine where I feel like it's not like taking because right now if I was going to make a loaf of sourdough bread I feel like it would take me all day <laughs> to like be sure I'm doing it correctly so I would like to get to a point where it's like easily done how do you balance productivity with rest um that's a good question I feel like I don't I I don't feel like I rest well like I feel like I have to be being productive to and this is just a me thing like I I've always like been a really big perfectionist I just feel like if I'm not doing something I'm not being productive which I kind of struggle with because I'm like I should be like able to just rest my mind for a little bit but for me working out is really restful not for my body per se but going on walks exercising lifting weights that always like zens me out and just puts me like really like good and happy mood so for me like prioritizing like body movement and being active really helps me feel rested and like listening to music on my headphones and working out like that really fills my cup it makes me feel rested and then I'm able to rest like once I'm once I like finish my to-do list which is being productive but I do recognize like some days where I'm just like way too too stressed to like really be productive and do anything so on those days, I'll try to like be rest, more restful, like be off of my phone. I don't like ever watch TV during the day unless I'm watching like an episode while doing like load of laundry or something, like folding it. But other than that, I don't watch TV, but I will watch like YouTube a lot throughout the day or listen to someone just jumped over the fence and the other side of that is a freeway so that's concerning am i jumping into this car what the heck okay anyway so yeah i'll get back to you on that i'll also work on my rest because i feel like i have i don't know but i do take i okay i will say this when i 
feel really, really tired or just exhausted or mentally exhausted, the way I'll stay restful is like I'll keep dinner really easy or what I'll do is I'll make dinner ahead of time. Like if I can feel like my energy is tanking really bad, I'll um, make dinner really early so that the cleanup is like easy and everything's like easy at night and I can just rest at night. Okay, this is a good question. Have you been able to connect with other young homemakers, homemakers who don't have children? I would love to find ways to make more connections. Most of my friends are single and working outside of the home. I love them dearly, yet I still think it'd be wonderful to be able to connect with friends who are homemaking and talk about cleaning, cooking, and marriage. Well, this is interesting because I don't really know any other in real life, like any homemakers that are at home that are married. Uh, other than I have one friend who is a stay at home wife and she doesn't have kids. So I think like we do relate a little bit on that. Um, I do have a couple friends that are stay at home wives that are moms. And so that's a little different because sometimes I feel like I have, I've like, I'll have all my routines and systems in place and I'm like, I have time to have a baby. <laughs> like I for sure do. Like I get where my time would get, it's filled up, uh, with having a child, but I'm also like trying to enjoy the time, like where we don't have children. So I would say, no, I haven't really been able to connect. Um, the only other thing is like that I find is that when I've watched a lot of YouTubers or I've seen a lot of YouTubers that are, you know, married and don't have kids and like if YouTube is their job, they're kind of home, but I still think like that's a job. So I don't know, but I do think it's, it would be nice to like have a bigger community. I think it might just be like where I live. Um, or maybe I just like, I don't know, but I'm also not <laughs> like, I really can be by myself all day long for days and not talk to anyone and I'm like totally happy so I personally don't have like a huge desire to have like a ton of connections in this similar way uh just because I'm like actually really just content <laughs> like by myself which I don't know if that's a bad thing or a what but I just like feel I don't have a desire to make a lot of connections I feel like if I had a desire to make more connections in that way I would and I'd be able to like find them and seek them out but I don't really have that desire so maybe that answers that okay last question some people say that being a stay-at-home wife mom is not possible for them because they can't afford living off of one income what would you say to them did you and your husband have to make any financial sacrifices yes and I actually have a video either it's out already or it's coming out on how to be a stay-at-home wife if you want to be one of course if you don't want to be one then you know, not everyone has to. Short answer, yes. We had to make a lot of financial sacrifices. Like I said, I was making a lot of money and I was kind of like forced to quit my job for medical reasons. And, you know, we didn't, I didn't go back to work and we've discussed like, should I get a part-time job or something? And we kind of like go back and forth on it. But even just then, I had to make a lot of sacrifices and how to keep up those sacrifices. Like I used to get like, facials, coffee every day, <laughs> go shopping, like go out to eat a lot. Like I would spend money all the time. Every single day I had to spend money and all of that had to stop immediately, which I think that idea is what makes people think that they can't live off one income, which I mean, it, it might not be for everyone. It's kind of hardcore. Like we don't go out to eat a lot. If we do, it's very minimal. We still, like, I feel like I enjoy my life a lot now. And I, I still enjoy my life a lot. I feel like, you know, we still get to buy, like, clothes. And I get to still get all, like, my regular cosmetic brands. Like, I don't buy the cheaper brand if I, you know, when I run out of something. But I have to be way more intentional. Like, I'm not, like, I, let's say a, an example right now. I still have like a hair oil and there's a new one I want to try and normally I would just buy the new one and try it also but I'm not going to get it until I'm completely out 
of my hair oil now because I just want to be like mindful and budget it more so yeah and like we don't drink alcohol really Gunner doesn't drink alcohol at all if I drink alcohol it's like two to four times a month maybe like maybe if that we don't drink alcohol we don't go out to eat we don't have any like super big subscriptions to anything Gunner doesn't spend any money on anything which is great uh, we drink all of our coffee at home eat all of our meals at home I'm very very intentional if we have to like buy something for the house I'm also like really not big on like decorating uh, and I feel like for even for like Christmas and things like that like people might spend a lot of money on decorations there's just like so many little things that you can cut out that I think most people would be surprised that adds up and even just off of one income we are still paying off in debt a lot there is a lot of sacrifices though that we um have to make but for us it's worth it like i'd rather be home and just like have all this like time to myself it's so it's like such a big blessing than be working and have us be like more busy and more stressed than and like be able to spend more money on just like stuff <laughs> I don't like get my lashes done I don't get my hair done I go don't get my nails done so I don't know I feel like some people like think those are things that they can't live without but I think most people can but I talk about that a lot in the in that video of how to be a stay-at-home wife because I do think a lot of people that want to be don't think that they can live off of one income and I also feel like as a woman or like in a Christian marriage, the woman is meant to be the helper to their husband. And that's not a bad thing. Like I would be a stay at home, a wife uh, and hopefully a mom, God willing in the future and be able to help my husband with a, a business and help him make more money. And even with that, like Gunnar has been getting multiple raises and I just feel like it's the outcome of us like working as a team in these roles. And I'm not saying, I don't know, like might not work out like that for everyone, but it just has for us. Gunnar called me again, so I forgot what I was saying, but I think if you're wanting to see if you can live off one income, figure out, figure out what your monthly expenses are and but like your necessities and don't worry about the extra stuff because I feel like God just takes care of that for us like we won't go out go without our desires so you know leave just you know schedule out what your actual necessities necessities are and see if you can make it work you know and I feel like unfortunately it doesn't work for everyone but I think you'd be surprised like I was so surprised. I was like, there's no way we can just live off one income. Like, there's absolutely no way. But we were able to do it. And then, I mean, now we're able to do it and pay off debt. But we also, like, are doing other things. Like, we took in Gra uh, Gunner's grandma. And she helps with the rent also. So, some people might see that as a sacrifice. Like, I don't know. We just see that as, like, a family thing. Like, you know, grandma needed help. So we took her in in that way, but it also does help us in a financial way, which is can be a sacrifice. Like we just got married, like we don't have, you know, the whole place to ourselves as newlyweds, but um, that's a sacrifice we're like both willing to make. There's just so many things that ended up working out when we decided that this is what we were going to be doing. I still go back and forth, like I might end up getting a work from home job just because we are paying off debt and I'm like we've already paid off so much of it I'll make a video about that in the future we've already paid off so much of it it's actually been like such a blessing and just like a big testimony to God like if you decide to do something like that I've never seen being debt being in debt as a sin but I really like see it like that now <laughs> and like when I decided I wanted to remove that from our life and like be debt free it just like so many things have been working in our favor it's and just incredible like and the only way the only thing that explains it is god's power and god's glory or in god's grace just so many like wonderful things can happen i feel like 
when we're making decisions that are in like accordance to God's will I might still get a work from home job because I we're like so close to being debt free now that I would rather just like work for a few months and like really get through that so that it's done like I would love that <laughs> so I might do that for a few months and then we you know would go back to being a stay-at-home wife but it's for like a good reason I wouldn't but I value like being my biggest goals in life are being an amazing wife and um, an amazing mom and those are like my biggest goals <laughs> like if I did those two things at the end of my life I'll be very happy and grateful that's my Q&A we'll see how long it ended up being I appreciate you guys I appreciate the people that took out time of their out of their day to write me a question I really appreciate it and I love Q&A's just because I love hearing other people's perspective and sometimes I get like some really good nuggets from people's like question and answers or I don't know I just really like those videos so if you guys want me to do a different Q&A like on a different topic just feel free to reach out to me I'm here to make the videos that you guys want to see and I appreciate you guys so much I'll see you guys in another video I hope you guys have a beautiful day bye